my name is Taylor and today we're going to talk about the different types of sled harnesses and how to fit them. So I have a bunch of different types of harnesses here that I will go through and show you. Uh, but before we start on that, I want to just show you just a basic dog harness. So this is just a basic Y front harness. It has a handle on the end. Um, I use this on my dog if we're walking in town or going on hikes. This is a great harness. but it is a terrible sled harness. And the reason for that is these pet harnesses that you can buy at the pet store, um, this one is a little bit nicer and I got it online, they, they have the right shape, potentially, to be okay. Um, but you'll notice there's no padding on this harness. Uh, even if there were padding, a lot of the harnesses that you find in pet stores, the padding just doesn't actually support the dog if they were to pull into it. A lot of these harnesses are actually designed to uh, prevent the dog from pulling, or at least discourage it. Um, another thing with a lot of these harnesses is you'll see they have these sliders on here. This means that they're easy to adjust and easy to fit your dog. Um, but it also means that there's chance of these sliders coming loose and that adjustment not staying in place. So even though you might be tempted to use a pet harness, they're really not the best option. So I highly discourage you from using one of these or a harness that you bought from PetSmart or Petco or any other dog store. And just invest a little bit of money in the proper, uh, the proper harnesses and you will be just fine. Okay, so this is just a standard X-Pack. The reason it is called an X-Pack or a cross-back, some people call it, is because there's this big cross that goes on the back. I will put a picture of my dog wearing it so you can see what it looks like. Uh, but this is what it looks like from the side. This is kind of your gold standard when it comes to harnesses. You're going to be using this one most of the time for most dog powered sports when it involves uh, sledding and bike drawing and things like that. Um, this is going to be the best choice for most dogs and most of those sports. You'll notice again. With this harness, there's all of this padding on the inside covered in dog fur, uh, but this is to help support the dog so that there isn't any pain when they are pulling into the harness. These harnesses also have to be fitted properly or they're not going to work, they're going to cause discomfort, and it could even discourage your dog from pulling. The next harness I have here is a Howling Dog Alaska Distance Harness, and you'll ask Taylor, this looks like one of those pet harnesses, it's a Y front harness. Um, what's the difference other than there being padding? So this is still a harness that is designed specifically for pole sports. You'll notice that on this harness there is, uh, this, this is called a tug loop. Um, this was on the X-Pack as well. But this is where you're going to connect your dog's line. This keeps it away from the dog's body and prevents uh, that clip snapping against them and hurting them. The other thing you'll notice about this harness is when you see it in action, and I'll try to show you here, this top piece will actually slide back and forth. So this harness was designed to use by dis dis distance mushers, and they are hooked up to the sled, and this will rotate to the side so that it can pull from the side. Some dogs pull better from the side versus from the end of their body. Uh, each dog's going to be different again, but uh, I generally don't use this harness for my own dogs. I use it for hiking if I'm going to be doing like hike drawing where they're pulling me on the hike uh, because it still allows them some comfort, but it doesn't necessarily allow them to put their entire uh, force into the harness for my dogs anyway. So this one's good for hiking. Some people use this for bike drawing as well, uh, but again, it's an option out there. This is another harness from Howling Dog Alaska. This is another halfback harness uh, where it goes just half of the dog's back, just like the distance harness. Uh, this one's a little bit different. This one is not really designed to be used with sledding. This is more for skid drawing or bike drawing where that connection point to the dog is going to be a lot higher than uh, say the end of their tail. You know, it's going to be a lot higher than their backs. So this one is great, uh, especially for people who aren't doing sledding but are interested in that bike drawing or ski drawing. I will post another picture of my dog wearing it. 
but this one is a nice option if you just want to change up the fit. Sometimes when your dog wears the same harness design, uh, depending on the fit, it can cause some chafing in their uh, armpits or you know other parts of their body, and changing up the harness can help prevent some of that and help those areas heal up so that you can switch back to that harness. Um, typically if you are seeing that though you want to make sure that that harness is fitted properly before uh, continuing to use it again. So, But again this is another option. Um, it does have a Y front. It's a little bit wider than that distance harness and I would say this harness specifically is not super ideal for dogs that are really really strong pullers. Um, this one I personally feel like doesn't have quite the same durability that uh, say an X-Pack or even this half halfback has. But this one too, not my favorite option for bike drawing. I personally use just uh, X-Packs, so that's another option. So this here looks similar to an X-Pack, uh, but what you'll notice is it doesn't actually have the X in the back. So this is the top of the dog. It, this one is known as an H-back, and the design is very similar to an X-back. The only difference is that it is an H instead of an X on their back. Uh, sometimes the X-backs, depending on the running style of the dog, can restrict the, the spine movement. And again, depending on each individual dog, they might need slightly different harnesses. And this one can be a good option or alternative to those X-backs. Everything else is pretty much the same. You have padding in the front here, a tug loop in the back where you're connecting your snaps, and then it allows the dog to put their entire body force into this harness. So this is a different style of harness and it might look a little bit goofy compared to the X-Back and the H-Back because you'll notice that the design is actually quite different. And I'll put a picture up again uh, what this looks like on a dog. But basically, you have your Y front here. This is where their chest is going to sit. But their back is entirely open. The only thing you have is this part at the end that keeps the end together. So this is good for dogs that have a lot of flex in their spine and they're able to use that entire space. Uh, it's also just another option to switch through and rotate your dogs through when you're looking to have harnesses touch their bodies in different spots. So this is another option. I personally really like this one. Um, I believe that Zero DC makes these in all different colors and then they have all of the reflective spots added as well. This one also has padding. This padding is a little bit lighter, but I would say because of the design of the harness, um, it's still fairly safe. Whereas um, a lot of the X-Backs and H-Backs you'll see like a felt padding or a neoprene padding and it's thicker um, and it works well with those harnesses as well. Okay, before I get on to the last two types of harnesses that I have with me here, I did want to show you some variation with the x -Pac styles. So this is a Howling Dog Alaska lightweight harness. You'll notice compared to, let's see if I have their standard harness here. Okay, so this is their standard x -Pac has that X on the back, padding in the front, but notice it only has the padding in the front and around the neck there. It does not go all the way to the end of the harness. It also, this is, so your dog's arms are going to be poking through the side here and this is the bottom that's closest to you. You'll notice right here there is this empty space. With the lightweight harness that I have here, it has this little piece here. So these harnesses are typically used, um, I believe they're designed more for houndy type sled dogs. Um, they have this little piece at the bottom to keep the chest together uh, so that those really deep chested dogs, the harness isn't slipping around on them. This harness also has padding all the way to the back, which I personally like, um, but not every dog needs, especially really fluffy dogs. And the last thing with this harness is it has these hooks on either side that you can attach the uh, tug to and this gives you options if you have a dog that's maybe crabbing that means they're running sideways you can hook them up to these side points and help kind of counter some of that crabbing 
uh, a lot of distance mushers also like to use those side connection points. So that's another variation of the X-Back. And then the last one that I have for X-Backs here is a non-stop dogware X-Back. This is, uh, I believe, one of their standards. Uh, this one has padding, the neoprene style, all the way to the base of the tail. But the only difference with this one, big difference I should say, is at the end here, instead of it being directly connected, this loop here is able to move side to side when the dog is pulling. I personally like this one for bike drawing when the dog might be doing a little more side to side action. Alright, and the last two types of harnesses I have are called wheel dog harnesses. Typically they are used for dogs who are in the wheel position or the furthest back, closest to the sled. Uh, these harnesses are designed for dogs who are going to be really close to that connection point, so the tugs are usually lower than the end of their tail. I'll show you what that means. But basically, you have this harness here, now this looks, this is a lot bigger harness, uh, but it's also longer. It has these little o-rings to allow the end of the harness to fall below the dog's tail, and then you connect it you know, like your normal tug loop here. Uh, and so when it sits on a dog, the end here might sit a little bit lower and it might look like the harness is too long, but this is actually how this harness is designed. It allows to take that pressure off of the dog's hips, uh, especially for those dogs who are at the wheel or really tall dogs that you have in your team and just helps pre prevent injury. I have a different harness here that does essentially the same thing, but it's designed differently. This is called the Nonstop Dog Wear Stick Harness, and it's called the Stick Harness because it has a stick at the end here. So this one, the back is kind of designed similarly to those H-back harnesses, you can kind of see, um, but it does the same function as that Howling Dog Alaska harness, where this is going to fall below the dog's tail and it's going to take that pressure off of the hips. This piece here is stretchy and bungee, so it might move around a little bit. I personally prefer this style over the Howling Dog one for my own dogs, uh, but I do know that a lot of people with more houndy type dogs do prefer this one. Um, this one again has that piece in the center so that the harness isn't sliding around your dog's chest. Okay. So those are all the different styles of harnesses that I have. There are a few more out there, and I'm sure that people who are knowledgeable in those can post in the comments below. Uh, but now I'm going to go into the basics of fitting a dog harness. So I have Ezio here. We're going to try on some harnesses with him. Uh, before we try on harnesses, I did want to mention that when you're buying a harness, you want to make sure that you're buying from a reputable uh, source. So a lot of harnesses that you might see on Amazon or other sites like Chewy or even sometimes in pet stores, they're going to label harnesses as uh, mushing harnesses. I know that Kurgo makes one and I believe Roughwear makes one as well. They're not the best in my opinion. You really want to be buying a harness from brands that are selling other gear for sled dogs. So some of my favorite brands are Howling Dog Alaska, Alpine Outfitters, Windigo Outfitters, um, I believe Condos still makes them and there are a couple more out there I will put them below as I think of them um, but just make sure that they are actually making pulling specific harnesses and they're not coming from a pet store you want to make sure that your dog is being safe in the gear that they are wearing for these sports so I have my sled dog Ezio here with me he has the non-stop dog wear x back on him the one with the the loop that can slide back and forth but sizing for most sled dog harnesses are going to be generally the same. So, if I have him stand up here, you're going to have three pieces to sizing a harness. And when you are sizing a harness, you always want to make sure that you're pulling it tight because harnesses tend to scrunch up and they might look really small if you're not putting that tension on the dog. When the dog is pulling, there is tension on it and that's how you want it to fit. So, I think that there are three important parts of fitting a harness and of course there are other parts as well but these three are going to be the most important in my opinion. The first one is going to be how the neck fits. So the neck on the harness should fit snug around your dog. You want to make sure that you're pulling all of their fur and their loose skin through otherwise it might be high up and 
I'm going to show you what that might look like because I had to do it with him. It might sit up kind of high and look kind of goofy. So you need to make sure that you pull all of that loose skin through to make sure that it's sitting where it should. Now these harnesses, again, should be snug around their neck, but you should be able to fit a finger or two through. Um, and then on the front here, where that Y is here, you want that to be sitting on their sternum or their breastbone, and that's where that force should be going. The second part of a harness that is going to be important is where the sides of the harnesses are hitting the dog when that tension is on there. So you notice this one is actually a little bit small on Ezio when it comes to the sides here. Ideally, you want the harness to be kind of coming around their ribs. This one's pretty close on him, uh, but because it's a little small, it gets close to his armpits here, and it can rub in the armpits and cause discomfort. So I'll show you what a better looking harness on him looks like. But again, you want it to be curving around the outside of those ribs, you know, sitting at the edge. If I were to pull this really hard, it might come back far enough, but this one really is not the best harness for him. And then at the end of the harness, you'll notice this one lengthwise is actually pretty good for Ezio. You want it to be hitting at the base of their tail, uh, where that spot where you're gonna see the tug loop connect to the harness, that's where you want it to be at the base of the tail. So those are the three most important things that you're gonna wanna keep in mind for your harness. Uh, but let me show you a couple different styles of harnesses on Ezio as well. While I'm putting these harnesses on, I did want to show you guys. So right now, this is that zero DC open back harness. I'm pulling his neck fluff through to make sure that it's gonna sit in the right spot. And then when I'm pulling their legs through, I like to be very careful. And you're gonna grab by their paw, lift it up, hold their paw in, and then bring it through the harness. This is gonna help prevent injury to their legs. You don't wanna be pulling muscles in directions that they don't go. So that's this harness on. And you'll notice similar fitting, but with this harness, it looks like the sides here get really close to his armpits but this is one of those things where you just have to try harnesses in person and get a hand on the dog and feel the dog this harness actually fits Ezio the best and the design of this harness allows for his arms to move freely and despite it looking like it's close it doesn't actually get into his armpits but with this harness you'll see it lines up with the base of his tail and there's no harness cutting into his soft belly and like I said, it's not getting into his armpits. So this is my favorite harness for him, but every dog is gonna be different. So this harness here is that Howling Dog Alaska uh, second skin harness. This one is a halfback, as you notice, it doesn't go all the way to the base of the tail. So this one is designed to only go half of their back. Again, it has that tug loop to keep it away from their backs when you have that snap moving around. And this one, again, is used for sports where your line is going to be coming in higher than the angle of their back. That way you're preventing injury to them from that snap hitting them. The neck should fit the same on this one. It should be nice and snug. And again, on the sides of this one, when there is tension on it, this one also should be not coming into the armpits. This one is a little bit small on Ezio when it comes to the way that these straps fit. This is adjustable, however, this one does not fit him. The neck on this one fits him well, and this is the issue with harnesses. It's finding one that fits every part of their body. So this harness that I have Ezio in is that wheel dog harness. Now this harness on Ezio is actually way too big. Um, if you are seeing normal X-back harnesses come past the base of the tail, you know it's way too long. Um, at this point, it's way too long. If it's a little bit over their tail and it fits everywhere else, that is okay. Um, but as a reminder, this design is actually meant to go past the base of their tail. This is what I meant by it's going to sit lower, uh, that tug is going to get attached here, and when they're pulling, it's taking that weight off of their hips. So it's good for wheel dogs who are taking on a lot of weight since they're the closest to the sled or whatever rig you're using with them. But this harness fits Ezio um, like large. It's not, it's not a good fit for him. You'll notice on a good 
fit, it's going to come across the end of their ribs. You can't see on Ezio because he's so fluffy, but that's going to be, you know, about there. This harness, when he's pulling, it comes further back and it comes into his belly and it's going to be really uncomfortable for him when he's pulling. The neck on this harness, again, you're not going to be able to see very well, but it is quite large on him. I can fit my entire hand through there. It is not snug. It's very loose. And what this does is it can come into their shoulders because it's too loose and it's going to restrict that movement. So again, it can be uncomfortable. You want it to be snug so that it's sitting on that sternum again uh, and so that it's not coming into their shoulder area. So that's the last harness that I'm going to show you. Um, but again, remember, make sure that it's snug around the neck and sitting on their sternum, coming across the back ribs. So with Ezio, that's going to look like right about here if it fit well. Uh, and again, like it can be deceiving when you're looking at pictures and videos because this looks like it might come into his armpits, but there's actually quite a lot of clearance room. So getting your hands on the dog and making sure it fits in person is going to be a lot more valuable than sending pictures to people online. So fitting it against the last couple of ribs, you want it to be kind of cupping them. And then with an X back, you want that harness at the base of the tail. With stick harnesses and wheel dog harnesses, you want it to be coming past their tail so that that pressure is not on their hips. So that's all I have on harnesses and how to fit them. I'm going to put a couple of resources down below, uh, but if you have any other questions or if I missed anything, let me know and I will try my best to either make a video on it or answer you in the comments. Alright, thank you for watching!